Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg is being sponsored by Best Buy Signs, creator of the Omaha Parks Program, OmahaFastFoods.com, Certified Transmission, Shouldit, Rotella's Italian Bakery, La Peeps Restaurant, Two Men and a Truck, Shout Weekly, Critter Control, Russ Kaplan Investments. Welcome to Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg, the show that will leave you feeling great about yourself, Omaha's heroes, and Omaha, where we live, work, and play. So park yourself on the bench and have fun. Hi, and welcome to Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg, the show that you return to each and every week to get that great feeling about yourself, to get that great feeling about the city of Omaha, and to learn from individuals who have done marvelous things in their life. And by the way, don't forget, each week we talk about a marvelous nonprofit organization here in Omaha, and this week we'll be talking about the Voices of Children. But first, you know, you might recognize her, I hope you do, because she has been in a lot of movies and she has played some magnificent roles, supporting roles, ones that people could not do without. They supported or she supported the entire storyline, none <laughs> other than Marilyn Tip. Marilyn, <laughs> welcome to your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg. We look forward to hearing about your career, things that you've done, how you've gotten there, and how you react with these major stars. But first, we are going to be talking about the motivational vignettes that each and every one of us have become accomplished to. We become really something that has become part of the show. So let's start off. What I would like you to do, please, is I would like you to think about a tree. Think about a tree in your mind. And as a matter of fact, as you think about that tree, as you visualize that tree, I want you to think about drawing the tree. That's right, with a pencil and paper, even if you're not artistically inclined, most of us at one point or another have drawn a tree. So begin to think about that in your mind. All right, you got it? Now here's the question. The tree that is in your mind, the tree that you would be drawing, does that tree have leaves? or is it barren? Isn't it interesting that at least four to five months out of the year, every tree has no leaves. But yet when we think about a tree, we actually think about the tree with the leaves on there. That's a marvelous opportunity for each and every one of us to recognize that we do think about positive things. Because if we thought about negative things, we would of course draw the tree without the leaves. So our natural inclination, your natural inclination, was to think of something positive. Now imagine in life if every time you were given that opportunity to draw something, to think of something, if you had first thought about the positive things just like you did the tree, what your marvelous outlook would be like. So from now on, think positively like you do with a tree. Now I also want to talk to you about a very famous individual, Albert Einstein. Now, what did he create? He created the most memorable formula that we all remember. What is that? E equals, well, you know the answer, MC squared. That's right. And what does the E stand for? Energy equals mass times circumference squared. And we love that formula. We learned that in physics class. It's terrific. Now, my question to you is, what formula do you have for your own energy? <laughs> Do you have one written down? Do you know what energizes you? Do you know what you need to square? Do you know what you need to multiply? Because that's exactly what Albert Einstein did. And if you know that person's formula for energy, the challenge for you right now is to understand what your energy is all about, what the formula is, and then of course, practice it. So that each and every time you wanna get energized, you take a look at your own personal formula and you get that formula as part of your life. Now, each and every week on the show, we always profile a nonprofit organization. And this week, we're gonna be profiling Voices for Children. Now, listen very carefully. Founded in 1987 by Kathy Bigsby Moore, Voices for Children has a 28-year track record of improving the lives of Nebraska's children and youth. Their mission is as follows. Voices for Children is the independent voice building pathways to opportunity for all children and families through research, policy, and community engagement. 
Their vision is that they will engage public and state leaders to build systems, removing obstacles and promoting opportunities for all children to lead healthy, secure, and fulfilling lives. Their values, they believe that all children deserve an equal opportunity to succeed in life. With kids at the center of their work, they follow very important values. One of the most important ones is, when a policy is good, they support it. When it is harmful, they fight it. When it is missing, they create it. For more information about Voices for Children, please be sure to visit their website, voicesforchildren.com. And now I have the marvelous honor to introduce you to someone you've seen on screen. And you might have said to yourself several times, geez, I know that person. That person lives in Omaha, Nebraska. She has been in such movies as Election, we've all seen that movie, about Schmitz and Citizen Ruth, am I correct in that one? As well as several TV commercials, training commercials, and some print media. Right now, if you know the face, I'm gonna introduce you to the person, none other than Marilyn Tipp. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, Andy. it's always a pleasure seeing you on screen Thank because you. <laughs> you do such a tremendous job in those supporting roles. I mean, you're it, and I often imagine a movie or a TV show with just the stars alone, and all of a sudden there's nothing, there's no story if there's no supporting actor or actress. So my question to you is, with all these roles, with all the things that you've done, why? Why did you pursue this? Why do you do this? Well, it's a lot of fun. Okay. I have, I've had a lot of opportunities to meet a lot of different kind of people. Right. Some nice, that's some not so nice. Okay. But uh, it, uh, it, it is certainly something to yap about during uh, parties. Everyone wants to hear all about the different Hollywood movie stars and everything. And uh -huh. even if you weren't a big deal, it's kind of nice to be able to talk about the big deals. The so people. when you talk about these Hollywood movie stars, go ahead and name drop. Come on. Let me see who they All are. All right. Well, Jack Nicholson. Okay. Laura Dern. Ah. Reese Witherspoon. Ooh. Uh, did I say Jack Nicholson? I already did say that, yeah, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. You must have Spoozy. a particular memory for it. So I have some things to say about Jack. Uh, Swoozie Kurtz, who's from Omaha, Nebraska. She's the redhead, and she's on Mike and Molly. She plays the mother. Okay. And and uh, M. C. Ganey and Kirkwood Smith from that '70s All right, show. The show is only 28 minutes. So. <laughs> go on and on. I'm, I'm sure you can. So how did you get started? What made you pursue this career in, in acting? What, 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 what was it? It was a fluke. Oh. That's what it was. It okay. was a fluke. I had a son who happened to be uh, gorgeous, if I might say so myself. I wouldn't he, expect anything else. Of but course. Okay. He is gorgeous and he happened to be doing some modeling right. and the guy that ran the modeling company ended up becoming the casting agent for Alexander Payne. I happened to go to a, it was a firehouse dinner theater downtown. This right. was 20 years ago. He was acting in it and he saw me in the audience because he, he remembered me. God only knows why he remembers me, <laughs> but he remembered me and he asked me if I wanted to come in and audition for a show. Right. I figured, what, what, what the heck? Of course I'll give it a try. Yeah. And I'll tell you, from that point on, it's been a wild ride. Now, have you ever acted before that, or is this your very first time when he mm. said, come in and what? No, no, I hadn't done anything. I think I was in road show at Central High School in one act, one time, and it was <laughs> a flop <laughs> at the time, you know. I was certainly not it, but uh, it's certainly become sure. a wonderful career for me. So there's something very important for each and every one of us to realize. Sometimes we have pursuits, and sometimes these pursuits just don't occur the way we want them to. But here was an opportunity that Marilyn had just simply out of the blue. Now, what would most of us have done in that situation, especially if we've never acted, or it might have been something professionally that you want to do, and someone comes up to you and says, you know what, come on in, try it, interview. Would you say no? The natural inclination is to say no, I've never done this before, I'm gonna be leaving my comfort zone, I don't wanna have anything to do with it. But if we learn something from Marilyn, that is, she's never acted before, and somebody like Alexander Payne says, I want you. 
Each and every one of us should take that same opportunity when something along comes by us where we can do something as good. So Marilyn, let's go back. So what was your, your first movie? The first movie was Citizen Ruth. Okay. And it was called The Devil Inside at that time. It started Laura Dern. And um, she, he was, Alexander Payne had done something much smaller in Omaha, but this was his first big movie. And I was at the time the highest paid actress in Nebraska, paid the same thing as Laura Dern, as a matter of fact, which I thought was pretty awesome. Wow. But uh, I got to be a member of the Screen Actors Guild, uh -huh. and I still am a member of the Screen Actors Guild. Right. Um, but I don't pay my dues right now since this is a right to work state. Uh -huh. You don't have to. Uh, but if I did, I'd be able to uh, be able to cast my vote in the right. Academy Awards, but I haven't done that this. In the so last that's the only few years. okay. So now here's a question. You mentioned Jack Nicholson and some of the other famous people. Yes. So when you're there with them, how intimidated do you get when you're there with them? Not in the least. Oh come on, Marilyn. No. These are high-paid, well-known no, people. No, no. You can't tell me you don't get nervous when you're standing there with them. No. What's your no. secret? Uh, I. They're people like right. everybody else. They do have enough people fluttering around them, right? Actually, falling all over them in every imaginable, imaginable capacity. They fall all over me, and I think no wonder these guys. Some of them have amazingly swelled heads, but some of them are down to earth. I kind of like to step back a little bit, check them out, see if they're going to be <laughs> the kind that that are approachable and those that are not approachable. So let me see if I understand this right. You're casting them to see how good they are, and we're talking about major stars. I think that takes a lot of audacity. Well, I, I have a You lot have of audacity. audacity. I figured on that. I do. I, I, I have to decide whether I want to ask them for their autograph, or even if I'll give them my autograph. Right <laughs> I, that's not that I have, I have a blown up <laughs> ego or anything like that. It's just that they are just people. Now I have to say, when my husband was on the set, he was starstruck. It was like, and I'm like, oh, for Pete's sake, Steve. He's just, <laughs> these are regular people. And most of the time, they're very nice. Some and, of the time, they're not so nice. And that is just a marvelous approach to take. Now, how would you feel if perhaps a very important dignitary or a very important sports fan <coughs> or a very important movie actor or actress came to you and were standing right next to you? Would you be intimidated? I'm going to suggest most people would. But I'm also going to suggest the following. There is only one person, just one, in this world that can imitate in, intimidate you just one you know who that is the person that you allow to intimidate you now if you take a look at marilyn what she was talking about here's someone from omaha nebraska never acted before and she's got this hey you know what i'm as good as you are or you're as good as i am <laughs> and when you see somebody who you think is more important than you are you have just violated that rule about letting someone intimidate you so take this very important lesson from Marilyn and don't let that happen. Remember, if you're in the same room with them, you deserve to be there. You won the right to be there. In addition to that, they won the right to be with you. So let's talk about an audition for a moment. You I go like in, that. Thank you. <laughs> you go in for an audition. Uh -huh. And what's your, your level of nervousness when, that, when you're there? I had no idea what I was getting into. <clears throat> I was completely new to the whole thing, and I pretty much improvised. I, I'm not a shy person. Right. And, um, no. <laughs> it's amazing. No. <laughs> uh, what happened is uh, they had a part in mind for me. They had me read these right. sides. And then I just kind of thought to myself, how would I read these sides? And I read them, and I put in a few expletives because I thought it needed it. <laughs> And I have since learned that you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to follow the script right. exactly the way right. it is. But I was, it was, I was lucky enough. They took this, uh, this camera and the interview, and they sent it to Alexander. And he loved the fact that I added those extra sure, tips. Sure, sure. He came flying into Omaha, Nebraska, and he happened to walk into the room. And I didn't know who the heck he was. I mean, he's a cute guy, walks yeah. in the room, uh -huh. and I'm like, 
oh my God, I've got to fix you up with my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> was he adorable? But it turns out he was the director. I ended up seeing him in a little while right, later right. in the room. And he, he said, you know, I love the way you did that, but I want you to try something else. Right. Well, he gives it to me. I read it. It called for me crying. Well, I was already halfway crying because I was upset about my daughter and something that had happened. So I was halfway there right anyway. So I thought, oh, what the heck? And I gave him the old crying, and I cried on cue. And oh, my <laughs> God, the rest was history. He gave me the seventh largest role in the movie. The seventh? That's fantastic. How yes. many roles were there? Uh, well, there are principals. Okay, we probably right. had right. 20 people that are the principals, and everybody else is extras. I am num was number seven. But, but he wanted me, if anybody saw about Schmidt and Kath, Kathy Bates. Oh, sure. Was, she was in the, uh, uh, she had the big role opposite Jack Nicholson. And I was supposed to have her role. Alexander Payne was giving me that opportunity wow. to, the ha to be the number one or number two in the movie. And that paid big. He, by then, he was already uh -huh. a big, uh, right. big well known. Week director, sure. and he wanted me in that role. I didn't know it had a naked. I didn't know there was a naked, uh, naked part to it. Oh, I didn't know I was going to be in the in a hot tub doing anything naked. But um, <laughs> uh, I always Go figured they could use. Go out and rent a DVD. Use, yeah. I figured they could. They would use. Uh, <laughs> A body, a body double, and I sure. thought Sharon Stone would sure. step in for sure. me if sure. there was a problem. Oh, but sure. Kathy Bates was All ended right. up getting that role uh, because Jack Nicholson did not want me, somebody who well, you're he, he show didn't him. know opposite him. He said, I'm going to win an Academy Award for my role, so I don't want an so, unknown. So let me ask you this question. Does Marilyn Tip have boundaries? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> boundaries. <laughs> You, Few. I, I can be reined in uh -huh. if you if you ask nicely and you 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 set out the boundaries for me. I can work within them, but not not willingly because it's not my natural not, tendency. Not your natural talent. And the reason I ask that question is because she got the role because she did not follow script. She did not follow structure. She actually said, "You know what." <laughs> I'm going to do it my way, and I'm not going to do it the way somebody <coughs> demands that I have it done. Now, the same thing happens to us in life. Somebody says to us, do something, but each and every one of us has a level of creativity. Each and every one of us has a past or an influence that we can draw upon to make it better, and that's exactly what happened to Marilyn when she was talking about that crying scene. If we reflect back to all the good things that have happened to us, and on cue, we are asked to energize ourselves, just like we talked about E equals MC squared earlier. It allows us to really do a wonderful performance. Because I am going to correct you, I think, on one thing. You said that you read the words. I'm going to suggest you either perform those words <laughs> and didn't necessarily read them. And that's what life is all about. So you've been in these movies. Now, what's your level of stardom that you want to acquire, or have you already done that? I'm where I want to be. Okay. I'm, I have no desire to go live in L.A. or New York and further my career. I'm quite happy being at home and hanging out with my grandkids and all that. I like being available if, uh, if something big comes to Omaha. Mm -hmm. I... I think it's worth my time and effort to do it, and I enjoy it, and I look forward to and hope to have the opportunity to be in comedies, because I love to make people laugh. I can imagine you do, and I know you have some physical comedy. We're going to talk about that in a moment, but I want to go back to something else. Now, these were major motion pictures. We also want to reveal that she's also a national television personality because you are a star of a children's show, Aunt Molly and Friends. Yes, Talk correct. to us about that. That is a fun television show for children under the ages of 10. Um, Christopher Ewing started that in Omaha. He came to Omaha, and uh, he was looking for Aunt Molly's, and okay. there were probably 200 people that showed up for the audition. And um, this is syndicated, kind of like the old bozo show maybe romper room combination okay. from years and years ago very home 
uh, with children in the audience. And what he, he was looking for was different Aunt Molly's in different parts of the country. Okay. Omaha had, would have one Aunt Molly, right. Detroit have a different Aunt Molly, uh, LA a different Aunt Molly, and he's building those up. And there are several cities that have Aunt Molly and friends. Now, I kind of seized the opportunity. He offered me the Aunt Molly role for Omaha, right. but I kind of came up with a new idea for him, and he went for it, and I was very excited. There you go again, stepping out of boundaries. <laughs> there I you did. go again. I did. I did. He, he, I suggested maybe having a character, and my character's name is Tippy, that goes that's off screen oftentimes and comes in on a green screen actually right. and talks to different Aunt Molly's with a script uh, all over the country. And what I do is I take children on various adventures wherever we happen to be. If I'm in Buffalo, New York, we would go to Niagara Falls and wow. I would take them on the, Maid of the Maiden of the Mist. If we're in Omaha, Nebraska, I took them to the, the Children's Museum and the Henry Dorley Zoo. We've done a few things in Omaha as well. Right. Um, the Union Pacific Railroad Museum. Uh, when I was in Detroit, they had me going to uh, Ford's Farm. It just depends on where I'm at and I take three or four kids and those those are broadcast to all of the different Aunt mm -hmm. Molly's all over the country. So of all the roles that you've played, yes. which is your favorite? Oh, I did a little movie called Celeste here in Omaha. Okay. And my, my character's name was Annie. And I play, played an older woman uh, with lusting after my next door neighbor who is mowing the lawn with his shirt off and he's glistening <laughs> his sweat is glistening off his chest and i'm drooling and and i'm i'm going after him with all my flirtatious skills in the world and i just was like hello there and i just had such a ball doing that it so is that what's called a cougar is that what the, i guess i guess but i'm older than a cougar okay so. all right <laughs> yes. so that was that was one of my favorites. that was one of your favorite roles and <laughs> yes. did it now was that a natural thing for you to do or did you really have to act nothing i do is acting it's okay. usually natural it's usually natural it usually comes right to <laughs> because me. i could tell by the way you were describing that song oh. It's just fabulous. <laughs> I bet it was. I bet it was. So you talked a little bit earlier about auditions and go, going into them. Sorry. What advice would you give people who go into an interview, which is really an audition? What advice would you give them? Because it's basically the same thing, isn't it? People are up for the same role. There's one person that's going to be making the decision. And the way you perform at that interview can determine whether or not you get that job. So briefly, give me some ideas about how to help people go through an interview. Well, I find that being yourself is probably the most important. Be true to yourself. Right. Be who you are. Be the person you are. Um, not what you're hoping they're gonna, they want. Right. Because they already have preconceived right. notions as to right. what they want. You either are or are not what they want, but you can change their aspect. They can end up looking at you and going, you know, that might just work. Yeah. I'm going to, I like that personality. There I like go. the way they are. And just got to be yourself. That's it. Another question. Out of everything that we've just talked about, what would be the one thing you want people to remember from this interview? Oh, what would I want you to remember? That... You could find happiness in just about anything that you pursue. If you have a good attitude about it and you don't, don't get discouraged, uh -huh. you just stay in there and enjoy there you yourself. You That's know? the way to do enjoy it. Enjoy life. Marilyn, it has been a pleasure learning about you, things that you've done. I've learned a lot, things about you I didn't know. I now am going to go out and write more of your movies because the one thing Thank I want you. you to get is more residual checks. <laughs> I love those residuals. I bet you do. I Marilyn, do. Marilyn, thank you so much for being here. It's been a great pleasure. And by the way, Marilyn reminds me of something, and that is a drawbridge. Now, why would Marilyn remind us of a drawbridge? Very, very, very simple. Can you imagine for a moment that you're going over a bridge and all of a sudden you're stopped because that gate goes down and the bridge goes up and there's 50, 60, 70, 80 cars waiting to go through. Now, what's so important about that? 
because there's only one boat going in that drawbridge. There's only one thing that's stopping traffic, and that's one person who's the captain of their boat, be it a sailboat or a motorboat, it doesn't matter. They are the one person that's doing it. And that's what Marilyn did. Marilyn changed things. She became that one person. I want each and every one of us to think about the fact that we are the captain of our own ships. We're the ones that sail those waters. We're the one that creates the directions that we're going to go in. And by the way, we, you, are the one that can actually get people to stop and watch you. Stop and pay attention to you, just like that drawbridge goes up for just one person. And that person is you. If we review the things that we've talked about in this show today, we've talked about the tree. We've talked about E equals MC squared. We talked about how to create a show that will really show off what you do in terms of acting and in terms of who you are. And of course, you are the drawbridge. You are the individual one. This show is designed to have you feel good about yourself, about a nonprofit organization, and about the people who make great opportunities here in Omaha, Nebraska. Next week, we've got another individual coming, and that is Mark Werner. Mark is a professional success coach, as well as the president of the Omaha Board of Realtors. He's going to share with us about the great opportunities you have in Omaha with real estate, and he's going to share some marvelous success stories with everyone here about how to be successful in life. So be sure to come back next week to your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg and stay tuned for more additional vignettes. Meet people exactly like Marilyn Tipp who will show you the opportunity how to live a great life. So between now and next week, remember, stay high on yourself. Think of the tree, think of EMC squared, think of drawbridges and how they can create a wonderful life for you. And remember, next Saturday at 10 o'clock, right here on KPAO, please return to your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg. We'll see you then. Have a great week. Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg was sponsored by Best Buy Signs, creator of the Omaha Parks Program, OmahaFastFoods.com, Certified Transmission, Shold It, Rotella's Italian Bakery, La Peeps Restaurant, Two Men and a Truck, Shout Weekly, Critter Control, Russ Kaplan Investments.